Good morning. I am in Cape May, in Cape May, New Jersey, at the Rugs by the Sea Rug School, and I'm demonstrating to my class my method for finishing rugs. The reason I use this method is because I hate to whip, and I find the whipping takes hours and hours, and this only takes a much shorter time. So that's also the reason I'm always in a hurry. So, when the rug is finished, I steam the rug on both sides, and I steam it quite aggressively because I am not a perfect cooker. I get a wet Turkish towel, a bath towel, really wet. I lay it on the rug and I iron it like this. Now I got a book going, this takes a while. <laughs> Steam it, be patient, every inch of the front, every inch of the back, lay it down somewhere. The next day, go look at it. If you like the way it looks, you're done with the steaming. If you don't, you steam it again. You can steam this rug as much as you want and pretty soon it will behave itself. The loops will even out and everything will be fine. So then I trim away the excess backing to about two inches. I first, I zigzag it or surge it, trim away the backing. So let's say two inches like this. Uh, all the way around the perimeter and then you press this back and hem it. And you hem it really loosey-goosey. Nobody's ever gonna see it. It's just kind of tacking it down into place. I learned this technique here in Cape May from a teacher called Barbara Miller about 30 years ago, and I've been using it ever since. Then you want to cut a piece of wool three or four inches wide. This one's extra wide because it's for an extra big rug. That's going to be uh, a complement to your rug. So you want something where the color is going to be a nice frame around your rug. Now, lucky me, I have loads of wool and I can sometimes even get a continuous piece by ripping off the edge of like a, a bolt or something. But if you don't have that, you can just piece it together like you would uh, a quilting project. Just make a nice miter and keep going. So now you've got this long piece goes all the way around the rug with a little extra. You need to go buy some cording. You can get this at any fabric store in the upholstery apartment, and it comes in many, many widths. So you wanna buy this cording according to how high your loops are. So if you've got a big, chunky, primitive rug, you want big, fat cording, and if you've got a little skinny, three cut rug, you want thinner cording. This one's kind of fat for this rug, but it's what I had on hand. Then on your sewing machine, you put the cording on one edge, you fold it over and you sew it on the sewing machine. If you're a fussy sewer, you could do it with a zipper foot. I don't, I don't wanna, I'm in a hurry. I'm always in a hurry, so I don't wanna change the foot and it really won't matter. So here we are, this is ready to go. And I want you to look at the front of the rug and decide where this last seam is gonna be. And I usually put it in say the bottom three quarters of a side. So in other words, there, let's say there. So you want to see how nicely that's going to go there and it's going to be very smooth and it's going to behave itself unlike the whipping sometimes separates and you have to go back and the, the corners are a pain in the neck. So don't start right at the very edge. You need uh, some of this for when you're doing your final, final finishing. Needle and thread. This is button thread, which is good. You could use sewing thread, you can use, but something heavy duty is probably better, especially if you're gonna use it on the 
on the floor. So I'm gonna only look at the front of this rug. I don't care what's going on in the back. And I'm going through next to the cording and I'm coming up through the backing of the rug. I'm gonna go over about two loops and I'm gonna go back down through the backing and through the wool and right next to the piece of cording. So now I've got one whole stitch in. And you could snug that right up to the loops, go over a couple more loops, make sure you catch the backing and snug that right up. <laughs> To the cording. And if you find there's a loop on the edge that's out of place or something, you could sew it right into place. Line them up like little soldiers. Go in between the loops if you can, but keep grabbing the backing and the piece of, I never know what to call this, piping that you've made. Okay, so now you can begin to see that's gonna be a beautiful edge. Eventually, we'll end up at a corner like this, and you can manipulate this so you can get a nice square corner by pushing it back this way, or you can get a nice round corner by pulling it around the corner. This is a very, very good technique to use on oval or round rugs because it just gives and gives and gives. In the case you're using, uh, when it, you're doing a round or oval rug, I would make this part shorter because that has to ease in around the corners and you don't want any extra bulk under there, especially if you're using it on the floor. You wanna keep it as flat as possible. So you've gone around the whole thing. You're very happy with it. You better get that, it could be the queen. Oh, we can't say that anymore. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Elizabeth. So there's two ways you could do this. This is the lazy way. You just give a little overlap and sew it in like that. I cut this to the exact spot where it's gonna cross over. I open this up and I sew this carefully with little tiny stitches down there and then I cut this back so they're going to meet up I sew these together wrap this back over finish this little seam here and then it fits right up against here and that's it maybe one of you could grab one of my rugs over there for me and I'll show a finished one how do you feel about Thank you so much. Wool? What? How do you feel about not using wool? Oh, you don't have to use wool. My circus rug has a, some beautiful synthetic twisted upholstery cording. I'm bringing it yeah, over. Yeah, that's good. Out. All right, so this was not finished with wool. This was finished with oh. some cording I got at nice. some fabric store. Oh, nice. Um, and of course I did this because I didn't even have time to sew the piece. It, it was a deadline for a book. And I side. love this. Yeah. Well, oh, nice. oh my God. this particular cording, which when you go by it, you want to make sure it has this flap. It'll make your life a lot easier. Oh. So it's not a single thing you're sewing down. Yeah. 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 So, so I thought that was lovely. Piece. Yeah. 
with that yes has this little flap here oh so I've you could like put this in a pillow yeah. if you were doing the edges or okay so this was great i didn't i wanted it to be circusy but i didn't want it to be overtaking mm -hmm. anything so i actually for the first time in my life chose a neutral color for something <laughs> okay so now here's a great big rug that i finished using this technique it's my mermaid and let me see if I can find, uh, just ignore that. That's how I hang it. You didn't pack that. <laughs> I don't pack it just thrills me. Oh. Okay, so here is, when you're done sewing it, you have this, uh, this wool is flapping around in the wind. You wanna trim that, sew it together. I skipped this step in the instructions sew it together and hem this down. When you hem this down, you wanna take a couple of stitches and really dig into the backing every couple of stitches because if this ever catches on anything, you don't want it pulling a whole bunch of stuff out. It'll really uh, be good if you're catching the backing and if this catches on something, it won't pull out. Sometimes I label my rugs. Let's see. And this one has a sleeve for hanging on a big fat dowel in my house. And let's see what else I can tell you about this. Let's see if there's a seam. There's got to be a seam somewhere. There. So I did not have a piece long enough to go around this giant rug. So I just seamed it like that. And that's a typical way quilters make a continuous edge, but you could just sew it straight if you want. I don't think it would matter one bit. I trim away any excess wool. There's not no excess black, wool under those. Yeah. I trimmed it right away and I take little tiny stitches. And I think that's it, let's see. When you're all done, I do steam it again to make sure these, and I double check it, make sure there's no gaps. I don't see any backing. So if you want to look closely in here, you can see my stitches. Oh yeah, yeah, I see them. Yeah. yeah. Look at them, beautiful. Yeah, thank you. And I love to do this, because you could do this. You have a good light, watch TV, take your time. But I, can, I did this rug in one afternoon. Wow. If I was whipping this, it would have taken me days and days. Mm -hmm. And then I'm pretty sure I wouldn't be happy with the results. Mm -hmm. So I just wanna say one more thing. When I learned this about, like I said, 30 years ago, I started doing my rugs like this. But rugs that I had previously whipped, um, after a while started coming apart. They're getting pilly, yeah, the threads are separated, the threads are popping, and these rugs are still holding up and they get walked on and everything, not this one, but rugs yes. in my house. And I thought, oh, I thought this was gonna be the less durable, but it's not, it's been fine. So give it a try. You have your instructions and anybody on YouTube who wants to uh, write to me, I'll send them off instructions. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. See you.